because I can't sense looking at myself. Alrighty, so welcome to the six steps to building a successful hoof care business. Thank you so much for making it here tonight. It really means a lot to me. Right, so to get the most out of this masterclass, uh, I highly recommend that you turn your phone onto silent to minimise distractions. We're going to run for about maybe 40, 45 minutes. And I just want to double check if you've downloaded your workbook. If you haven't, in the chat box, there should be um, the option, I put it in there, yes, I put in the handouts section. Uh, the workbook is there in case you wanted it handy. Now, to use the go the go to webinar box, this is what you should be able to see. Here's your handout here. Uh, if you want to minimise this, you can use the little red button there, the little red arrow, and that should minimise it for you so it's not over the screen. And yeah, if you need to ask a question, it's pretty self-explanatory. Pop it in the box here. Now, with your questions, uh, put them in whenever you need to, whenever it comes to your head, just put it into the questions box. But I might, I'll keep a little eye on it. And if something needs to be answered immediately, I will. But I'll try to keep it, the questions till the end so that we can go through them all at once. All right. So does this resonate with any of you? You might feel like you're an imposter. So imposter syndrome, for anybody who's unfamiliar, is where you believe that you are not as competent at your, at your job as others believe that you are. And I know I've battled with this in the past, definitely. Do you work hard all day, but your bank account doesn't reflect your efforts? So we work a, in a really difficult job. Hoof care is tough and your bank account should reflect how hard you work, but sometimes it just doesn't. Do you feel like your clients run you around? So handling demanding clients is exhausting and sometimes it is just easier to go along with what they say, right? So giving them discounts that you might not want to discount, working weekends or after hours because they have a job. I mean, what, what do they think we do during the week? You know, that kind of thing. It can be really difficult dealing with those types of people. If, like, do you want to fix all these struggles you're having within your business? If you didn't want to, you probably wouldn't be on this webinar tonight. So you might not know where to start, though. It can be a bit all, all over. It, could, it can be a bit overwhelming. The good news is if you're unsure how to create that thriving health care business, you're in the right place tonight. So who am I anyway? Some of you might already know me, but my name's Lisa and I've been working professionally in the hoof care world for about 10 years now. Uh, and I know how important hoof care is to you because it's my passion too. It's the very reason that I created the Glorious Hoof Academy to deliver a bespoke business training program for hoof care professionals to ensure that you have the skills you need to successfully build and grow your hoof care business so that you can enjoy what you do whilst also being able to pay your bills and live the life that you want. Now that I've introduced myself, I'm going to turn off my webcam so that we can all concentrate on the content. Okay. So what does my hoof care business provide for me in my life? So this is a photo of my, my mare and my family. I love riding my mare. Her name's Ali, obviously. Uh, I love riding her. <laughs> and we dabble in low level eventing and dressage. I'm also married to a wonderful man named Andrew and we have a beautiful daughter called Evie together. Running my business around our lives is super important to me because I want to be there with my family and I don't want to be stuck at work. You know what I mean? We've just recently bought acres in the Hawkesbury region in Sydney and that's been a dream of mine for a really long time. Uh, so paying that mortgage is super important to me. <laughs> my business needs to do double duty. It has to provide the flexibility so I can be a mom and a wife, run my house, do the school run, complete my equine science degree at uni and ride my horse. Plus it needs to be able to pay the bills that comes with that lifestyle. Have a think about what your business needs to do for you and your lifestyle. Can that deliver? So this is me way back when I was doing, I think, my first block at my hoof school. Look at how like young and bright eyed and bushy tailed I was. I was so optimistic. I really loved hoof school. I finally felt like I had found my people, if that makes sense. 
Uh, and my initial education put me in good stead to know how to take care of hooves. I learned the tools and the techniques. I understood the horses. I learned the trade, but I hit the ground with no experience or knowledge of how to run a profitable and successful small business. And I can tell you, I made all the mistakes over and over again. And my business was barely more than a side hustle. I knew what I wanted. I knew that I wanted to make this my career, right? Because I was so passionate about hoof care and it made me so happy. It still does today. But at the time I didn't know how to make it all work until I hired a business coach. So once we finish our basic training, we get out there and we start taking care of hooves, but sometimes things start to fall apart. You know, the wheels come off the cart. Clients want discounts and to extend cycles to save money. We have to chase payments. Cash flow is a mess. You know, and we end up feeling like a failure or a fake. We start to think everybody else seems to be able to make it work. Why can't I? So last year I surveyed hoof care providers from all over the world about their business troubles. Some of you might have even completed that survey for me and I really thank you for that. When I asked you what your biggest challenge was when you were setting up your business, this is what you told me. So this is a word cloud for anyone that's not uh, familiar with it. And what I did with that data is I went through everybody's comments and I categorized it into all these different categories about what their problem was. And the more times people said a particular category, the bigger the word is in the word cloud. So you can see here financial is probably the biggest word and the biggest problem that everybody had when they were setting up their health care business and not just setting up, but also running their health care business. Mindset was an issue. This is definitely a, a, something I've had to work really hard on. Client relations is a nice big word there. Turning it from a side hustle to a full time business, scheduling, paperwork, time management, like None of this should be a surprise for anyone who's worked in the, in the job for a while. And it wasn't a surprise to me either because I had all of these problems. The business coach that I worked with turned my business around and helped me to put in the work that, to make it into a six figure business that it is today. I'll be forever grateful for the, the, you know, the support and the knowledge that I gained from being in that program. Now, I see so many of my colleagues struggling with these issues, getting burnt out and overwhelmed, sometimes to the point where they have to leave the industry. And these are really good people who are talented and passionate about hoof care and who are helping a lot of horses, but the industry just chews them up and spits them out. It's really sad. So why am I here tonight? So I have a passion for hoof care and helping horses but there are only so many horses that I can help personally. You know, I want to make widespread and lasting change to the industry. And I think that the best way for me to do that is to support my colleagues by helping them to create the business that they need to facilitate them in staying in hoof care and helping more horses. So my goal is to help other hoof care providers make their businesses work for them. It really is time for industry change. So enter the Glorious Hoof Academy. Uh, this is a place that I created for hoof care providers to learn how to turn their passion into a profitable business that stands the test of time and supports their lifestyle. What I did was I went through the business coaching content um, and because that content wasn't made for hoof care providers, it was just a general business uh, course. And I went through everything that I think that hoof care providers need and I've made it into a course that is really going to fit with health care providers. I just asked one thing, if you could please stay until the end of the masterclass, I would love to share with you what the Glorious Health Academy is all about and how I can help you. Also, for webinar attendees, I've got a special bonus available for those of you here tonight, but I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to that later on. Let's start with the content. Right, so what we'll cover today or tonight rather, we will start with the success mindset because honestly, this is the limiting factor really when it comes to being successful in your business. If your mindset is not where it needs to be, then it can really hinder you and hold you back. Then we'll move on to the financial side of things, straight into the boring administration that goes along with running a traveling small business. Then on to topics not often covered in hoof care education, branding, marketing and growth planning. Tonight, I wanna to look into how these issues manifest and how powerful it can be for your business to eliminate them out of your life. I took these exact steps to go from a business that wasn't making any money, and I'll be honest, it was a side hustle hobby at the time. And I took that business and 
brought it to a six figure business all while staying flexible so that I'm available for my family and for uni and my horses. Let's dive into number one. Righto. So what even is a success mindset? It's a mental state of being, like a mental state of being where you have resilience and purpose. So hoof care providers with a success mindset have a really firm grasp on their reason why. And this is what grounds you and what carries you through the tough times. If you wanna get out your um, workbook, this is the first, uh, the first part of your workbook here. So the first question is, what is my why? Have a think about what your why is. Why is it that you do this job? What is it that you want? Like what, like what got you into this in the first place? What is it that sets you alight about hoof care? Have a think about it and write that down in your workbook. You know, there's a space for that there. While you're having a think about writing that down, um, I'll let you know what mine is. So you might've already guessed, mine is helping horses. It's always coming back to the horses for me, which is why I wanna do this course so that I can help more horses indirectly. I'll give you a minute and I'm going to have a sip of water. Alrighty, let's move on to the next part. So health care providers with a success mindset have got vision. You know, they've got vision for their business and they've got vision for their lives. And what the way that I like to, to look at that is we call that our big picture vision. So your big picture vision is basically what your ideal life is. If you were to think in 10 years time, what your ideal life is, you're living your ideal life, you're doing everything that you want to do, you've achieved everything you want to achieve or you're achieving it, what does that look like? You know, what, what does that perfect life to you look like? That is something, that's our big picture vision and we need to come back to it time and time again. Otherwise you can get bogged down in the day-to-day -day struggle and really it can, it can, it just gives you resilience to get through those hard times. So in your workbook, the next part is what could stand in your way of achieving your big picture vision? What are the barriers and obstacles that you're seeing that's stopping you from living that life today? I'll give you a few minutes or like a minute maybe to write that stuff down. I'll fill up my water again. Now, excuse the glob glob, because my husband brought me a water cooler for my desk, because he knows me very well. He might hear it blobbing, and I do apologize for that. Alrighty, we'll move on to the next bit. So, people with a success mindset, to get to that part, to the, get to that place where you have a success mindset, you need to do a lot of work. And a big part of it is doing the work to banish overwhelm. This is a really big deal for horse, hoof care providers because we find it really hard to say no. And, you know, not banishing overwhelm, letting that overwhelm you, not learning how to put boundaries in and say no, can cause burnout and compassion fatigue. And successful hoof care providers know that, that will, that's the path to destruction for us. So we have to set ourselves up for success to avoid these pitfalls. The next section is what, you know, people with a success mindset, they're really clear on their beliefs, their beliefs about themselves, their beliefs about the world. When you've done the work to go through what you believe, you need to make sure that your beliefs and your thoughts about yourself serve you. There's no good having beliefs about yourself that you're not good enough. You don't know how to do this. You haven't done enough education. You, you know, can't say no to that person. These kind of beliefs about yourself, they don't serve you and they need to be, they need to be removed from your life. Hand in hand with beliefs is your values. So your values tie you to your core self and being authentic is the only path to living a happy and fulfilled life in my opinion. And also, Staying true to yourself in your business will help you gain longevity in this career, definitely. All right, so does this sound familiar? You know that you should raise your prices, but you're afraid of what your customers will say. And, you know, maybe for instance, you have not charged for a trim when you're unable to get the horse done because of the horse's poor behavior. You know, you thought to yourself, oh, you know, that, that that client didn't get the service that they paid for, so I'm not going to charge them and that's okay. And I just, you know, I just spent an hour and a half trying to work with that horse that was trying to kick my head off. That's not 
thoughts that serve you and that's where your, your belief system is coming in and your success mindset is not helping you there. You know, maybe you are just trying to get through the day every day and you're practically face clean into the couch when you get home absolutely exhausted. You know, even if you do have a success mindset and you've got all your business, you know, all your ducks in a row with your business, sometimes healthcare providers do have a big day where we are exhausted, but that shouldn't be the daily experience. You should be enjoying your job each day. And maybe you wish you had an office job, you know, in the nice cushy uh, office chair in the air conditioned indoors. I know some, I've come from the corporate, corporate world prior to this, and sometimes I do wish, you know, that I could go back there sometimes. When you have a success mindset, this is what it can do for you. When you've done the hard work, instilling it into your life, you can wake up every day knowing that you can handle anything that the day throws at you. You can have the strength to say no when a situation doesn't serve you. That's a really important one, especially in hoof care. We need to stay safe. Having the confidence to make your hoof care practice work for you, not just going with the flow and it just turns into something that you might not want it to be. And could you imagine making enough money so that you work less but you can still afford your dream life. Alrighty, section two, financial realisation. So this is all about knowing your bottom line. Successful farrows and trimmers have a well thought out pricing strategy. So a pricing strategy is so super important to the overall financial success of your business. Without a pricing strategy, you can't make smart decisions about your business. In your workbook, we're gonna move on to the next question. So how can you develop your pricing strategies, the question. If you've never been introduced to this concept before, this can seem counterintuitive, but what you need to do is you need to start with how much you need to make, right? How much do you need to make in a year, a month, a week to cover all your expenses for your dream life that you want, right? Then you need to take that figure and you need to look at how many horses you can do in a set time period and reverse engineer your price strategy from there, right? Does that make sense? Does anybody have a question that needs to be clarified with that? If not, pop into here how you think you could help develop your pricing strategy. I'll give you a minute. My little dog sitting underneath my desk, being a very cute little dog. Oh, he's having a stretch. Hello, Maddie. You're a good boy. All righty. So the next part is successful farriers and trimmers know how much it costs them to trim or shoe a horse. This concept was introduced to me at the Australian Farriers Conference a number of years ago, and it really did blow my mind. I didn't know at the time how much it cost me. How, like, it, like, if you don't know how much it costs you to do a job, then how do you know how much money you're actually taking home at the end of the day? You know, you, you, you've, have, you've got no idea. So figuring out how much it costs you to trim or shoe one horse is another part of that pricing strategy. You need to ensure that your business has got good cash flow. So having a healthy cash flow is so important because it, you need it to pay your overheads. You need to make sure that you have money in there to pay yourself. For instance, having a healthy cash flow means that you can have a weekly pay and not have to worry about having time off and not being paid. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a bit of a no-brainer making sure that you have good cash flow and having good cash flow comes from pricing strategies and it comes from forecasting. So for forecasting, if you don't know how, if you are on track to achieve your financial goals for this quarter, this half year, you know, this financial year, then you aren't able to make decisions or plan for the future. We need to know, we need to plan around and forecast around um, things like holidays and sick leave, you know, sick, sick leave or if you're not having an operation or something, um, you know, life events, that kind of thing. If you're not forecasting for that and forecasting for growth, then you can't make decisions. Right, so is this where you're sitting at the moment? You have to scrape your accounts to put fuel in the truck, for instance, but you know, you thought, oh my gosh, I thought I had $300 in the account yesterday and now I've got, you know, bits and bobs everywhere and I've got to put it all together just to put fuel in the truck to get to the next place. You know, maybe, you know, I keep harping on on this, but this is a really important point. Maybe you don't know how much it costs you to trim, to turn up and trim one horse. Um, and you feel like you're working your butt off every single day, exhausted, but you aren't seeing that reflected in your bank statements. 
uh, you know, for instance, maybe you're waiting on payment from that big client from last week so that you can pay for the supplies for the rehab job next week. When do you get paid? <laughs> you know, uh, and maybe you were shocked at your last tax return thinking, where on earth did all that money go? This is what getting on top of your finances can do for you. You know, you can charge appropriately for your time and your education and know that you deserve the money that you're getting, you know. You can pay yourself a dependable weekly wage, even if you haven't had the last week off. So I touched on that before, but imagine having a bank account set up so that you just get your X amount of dollars every week that you know that you need to pay your bills and your business just automatically does that. And you don't need to worry about, oh, well, I'm having two weeks off over Christmas and I'm going to be broke and I'm going to need to get back to work quick because I've got no money left and da-da-da. When you forecast, when you have your pricing strategy sorted out, when you are when you know what your financials are sitting at, you can work around that. Imagine having the cash right there in the account, knowing you can pay for that trip to the ferry supply without any issues. And this is the best bit. This is something that made me really excited. Giving yourself a pay rise every year without increasing your client base. So back when I was in the corporate world, I got a pay rise every year, a certain percentage, one, two, three percent, whatever it is that, you know, however well the company went, everyone in the company would get a pay rise. Imagine being able to do that without having to take on more horses. This is what forecasting can really help you with as well. Right. This is the administration side. This is probably the bit that I struggled with the most when I first started with my business coach because my books were not organised. I had stuff everywhere and I didn't even think that I could make it easier for myself. So you need to make things easy for yourself with the administration side of things. So having systems in place to automate and streamline your invoicing, your scheduling, your expenses and paying bills you know, is, is so important, you know. And another thing to think of, do you pay yourself for the time that you spend doing book work? Because our hourly rate shouldn't just cover the time that we're spent bent over under horses working on their feet. It needs to cover our drive time. It needs to cover our book work time. Any time that we spend sitting at the desk doing any kind of administrative tasks for our, for our business. So streamlining, streamlining, for instance, uh, your payment system makes it easy, quick and efficient for your clients to pay you on time. When I, when I started using an invoicing app with reminders and whatnot, it, I went from having two ways for my clients to pay me, either cash on the day or bank transfer, which then I had to follow up, and that's it, right? What, one good what, one good thing of using an invoicing app is that it sends their reminders. You don't need to chase the app chases for you if you accept um, accounts, and you know it 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 gives you my invoicing app gives me four different ways for my clients to pay me. The more ways you can give your client to pay you, the easier it is to get money out of them. Now, also, you know, one big thing for me was automating my booking system. Booking was such a drama for me and when I went to an automated booking system it cut down so much on multiple contact points with my clients there was no more having to text a million people to reschedule things there was no more having to remind people sit there on a Sunday night and remind everyone that they have their you know their farrier appointment this week it, it gave me time back with my family Spending time building these systems stops us from muddling things as we go along and it gives you more time to do the things that you love. Now in your workbook, jot down very quickly, what are some of the things that you can streamline when it comes to your administration in your business? You have a think about what's your biggest issue with your administration at the moment and just list it. You don't have to figure out a solution for it right this second, but just jot down anything that you think you could automate or look into making it easier on yourself. I'll have another little drink. Okay. Are you sick of chasing payments? I know I was. <laughs> and do you spend hours a week doing your admin tasks like invoicing and scheduling? scheduling? And are you sick of doing the the dance of a million reschedules when your clients forget that they even had you booked. These are some real big bugbears that can be sorted out once you have streamlined your administration tasks. 
So imagine your clients paying you on time every time, never having to chase them. That's something that this can bring to you. Your invoices, imagine your invoices and your schedule bookings are sent automatically as well as all the reminders. You don't have to sit there and do it. The systems will do it for you. And imagine never turning up to a job that your client has forgotten about ever again. When your books and administration are streamlined and you have processes in place to support you and support your work, this is what can be realised for you. All right, so we're moving on to something that can be a bit controversial in the farrier world and the trimming world, I will admit, but it's really worked well for me. So developing your brand. Developing your brand to reflect you can help solidify your POD. So your POD is your point of difference. It's what makes you stand out from the crowd, right? So that could be a reputation for fixing laminitis ponies, for instance, or maybe your ability to show up on time every time, your reliability, that could be your point of difference. Um, there's so many different things that could be your point of difference. In your workbook, jot down some ideas of what something that you can do well that could be your point of difference, right? Everybody has something that they just they just get, that's their shtick. Pop it down in your under number four on page five, what could be my point of difference? All right, the next section is attracting, a good brand can attract your ideal client. Now, this was a concept that I'd never come across before until I had started with a business coach, I'm pretty sure. So attracting your ideal client, your ideal client is the person that you wish that your books were full of, like a carbon copy of this person over and over again, everyone is just an ideal client. Everyone's ideal client is slightly different and you need to develop your brand to speak to that person, right? In your workbook, have a think and jot down some thoughts about who your ideal client could be. For instance, it could be someone who, uh, you know, well, the, the thing about ideal clients is you need to know you need to kind of create a little bit of an avatar of that person. So how about I give you an example of what my ideal client is and then that will give you some ideas to think about yours. So my ideal client, it's going to sound silly, but you've got to do this whole process. Her name is Michelle. She's an imaginary person. She works an office job and she lives in the western suburbs with her husband and maybe one child, right? Horses are her entire, like, she loves horses. Horses have been is something that she's been in since she was a little girl and she's quite knowledgeable about horses and she's a savvy client. She's not um, a weekend, you know, she might be a weekend warrior, but she's she's come from a background where she really knows horses. So she has, you know, enough income to be able to pay the higher price that I've set my pricing point at. She, you know, she enjoys hanging out on Facebook and Instagram um, she likes going to the movies uh, when she's not riding her horses and her horses mean escape for her, escape from her everyday life. It, it, you know, it, she just, she dreams of riding off into the sunset on her horses. You know, maybe she's into endurance, for instance, and she, once her horses are fit, she just goes, you know, she goes off and loves doing endurance riding, for instance. So that's who my ideal client is in my health care. I'll give you one sec to finish writing down who your ideal client might be. And I'd love to pop a couple of you to pop into the comments um, what your ideal client's name is. If you want. Natalie says Lisa. <laughs> I don't know. Karen. <laughs> Well done, Courtney. Richie Rich, yeah, definitely. Sandy, that's a good name. That's a good name. Kim, she was real, yes. Sometimes our ideal client are real people, definitely. Not everyone fits it. The other thing I want to show you, it's probably a little bit small, but this is my brand, right? I spent a lot of time um, and, you know, a little bit of money I invested with a professional brand developer to develop my brand. Um, and my brand really reflects me, reflects who I am. So your branding needs to genuinely, ref genuinely reflect who you are and appeal to your ideal client and it will, give, it will give everyone a clear idea of your place in the industry, right? Solid branding can help you build a solid reputation and credibility in your niche. Is this you? Do you try to be everything to everyone? 
when we first start out in hoof care, we want to be everything to everyone, right? But it's, it's just not sustainable. You need to find your niche, but maybe you don't know what, even know what a niche is or what your niche could be. You don't have a specialty. That might be you. And maybe you keep getting clients that are not quite, just not quite the right fit. And when it all goes wrong with a client and you guys have to part ways, it can be really emotionally hard dealing with that and dealing with client turnover. I know I've definitely gotten upset a number of times in the past when I've not, when things have not worked out with a client and that's not necessarily your fault. It's just that, you know, that you and that client just don't, don't vibe for instance. So imagine flourishing in your niche and knowing that you own it, that it is your little piece, your little, your little part of the hoof care industry. And imagine every new client passing your vetting with flying colors, right? If you might never need to have to take on the emotional hit of being sacked or sacking someone ever again, if your branding and your, and, and, you know, genuinely reflects who you are and genuinely attracts your ideal client. And imagine having the, this, this, this bit really is something that uh, is very important to me. Imagine having the respect of your peers for occupying the space you have carved out for yourself. Imagine how proud that would make you feel. Next up, so uh, going along with branding is promotion and marketing. So this is something that can be a little bit controversial in the hoof care world. So there's a myth in hoof care that word of mouth is all that you need to get your books full. And that might be very true. But considering what we've spoken about tonight, do you want to work with your ideal, sorry, do you want to work with people who are just filling your books, just any rando filling your books? Or do you want to work with your ideal client to achieve great results for every horse that you trim or shoe? I know what I would prefer. And it's definitely a, books, a book full of Michelle's. <laughs> you know, do, you know, how many times has one of your good clients referred you to a friend and it hasn't worked out? That's definitely happened a few times to me. And these people just don't quite, don't quite work. Uh, you know, fairies and trimmers who are confident, they know that marketing is not a dirty word. It, it's not, it, it definitely, marketing and advertising has a place in the hoof care industry and it might not look the way that you think, right? It could be as simple as having a nice branded website, matching so socials, showcasing your work, or you could go all in and spend some money on some Facebook ads to get in front of your ideal client, which is especially important when you're starting out or when moving to a new location. Having your brand and work out there can really lift your professional persona. People know who you are, even if they're not one of your clients. And utilizing a web page or your socials is quite important because this is where most people go these days to get their information. They don't look in the newspaper or flip through a magazine to look for an ad for a farrier or a trimmer. They Google it these days. You know, print media and print advertising really is a dying market keeping up with the times has been very, very helpful for me in my business. So is this you? You may not have any idea how to use Facebook or Insta or TikTok to help promote your brand, right? And maybe you struggle to fill your books with your ideal client. Do you see the work of other hoof care providers online and think, oh gosh, I wish I could do that? There's promotion can help to get rid of these issues for you. Let's head to your book, right? Where is it? Developing, oh, we've missed one. Who is my ideal client and how can I get them to notice me? Oh no, no, we didn't miss that one. Never mind. we did do that one. Number five, putting yourself out there. Do you have a mind block around self-promotion? Does it make you feel icky or worried about marketing yourself? Are you scared to put yourself out there thinking about what people will say and what people will do? once you've put yourself out there, take a moment to write down a few notes on this because that can be something that you can refer back to and start working on that. Okay. So. <clears throat> Imagine. Having an online presence and a lot plus a local reputation to be proud of, and knowing that your represent your rep 
your reputation precedes you when you meet a new client. I've really enjoyed over the last couple of years, once getting my branding and my marketing all right, having people contact me and they want to work directly with me in particular. Not just, they didn't just Google barrier in Penrith, for instance, and then my number, I was just the first person that said, yeah, sure, I'll come out and trim your horse. They have done their research, they've looked at my staff and they want to work with me in particular. That, that makes me feel really good. Um, and can you imagine closing your books because you are busy enough? Like you don't need any more work. Your, your books are closed. That can feel very, I can just feel awesome to be closing your books and, and have the mindset to say, no, I'm helping the horses that I'm helping now. And if, you know, if I need to open my books later, there's people waiting there ready to work with me. This is what having a marketing strategy in place can, de can deliver for your business. We come to the last section, planning for the future. So planning for growth can mean whatever you want it to mean. It doesn't need to mean that you are rushed off your feet with too many horses on the books or, you know, it can mean giving yourself a pay rise every year or expanding to become a multifarrier practice. It could mean um, increasing your take home pay or reinvesting back into your business so that you can offer more in the future. For myself, my goal at the moment and my plan for the future is to buy the Metron system. Does anybody else have the Metron system? I'm so like jealous if you do, I desperately want it, but I'm saving up for it at the moment. It could also, like planning for the future could also mean planning for retirement or diversifying your business so that you don't wreck your body um, or, you know, planning to um, have career longevity, right? Successful, success and growth go hand in hand when we utilise goal setting and set smart goals. Plan for growth in your business and future-proof our lifestyles. So using tried and true goal setting strategies can transform your business and make it work hard for you, not you working hard for your business. What are a couple of goals that you would like to implement in your business? Go to your workbook. I think I've put here, yeah, what goals would you set for the short and medium term? I'll give you a couple of minutes to just jot down some ideas on that. For me, it's definitely, I want to have another baby this year. So that's something that I need to plan for. Oh, I'm just going to fix my, my headphones are all twisted. That gives you guys a minute anyway. Alrighty. So is the clock ticking for you? Maybe you think, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to stay in this career. My body hurts. Like things are just a lot, you know, maybe you're copying it mentally and you're just not able to, you know, you think how much longer can I cope? Maybe you have no idea how to increase your revenue without increasing your client base. Although now you should have a bit of an idea after we've gone through the financial stuff. And maybe you find it really difficult to take time off for important life events or holidays, for instance. Um, this can be a big problem for hoof care providers because our clients, they do need us. And when we provide that service, uh, that top quality service for them, we feel like we can't take time off. But if you plan, then you will be able to take significant time off. In my previous job in the corporate world, I had five weeks of annual leave every year, guaranteed every year. And what I wanted to do when I left the corporate world was I wanted to carry that over into my business and it took me a long time to be able to implement it but I have five weeks off every year. I didn't last year because of COVID because what was the point there wasn't anything to do <laughs> other than other than work um, so I still have a little bit of time off but I have two weeks off over Christmas every year sometimes three um, and that time is really important to me. So imagine having a clear idea on where you will be in six months, in 12 months, in and in years to come, right? And knowing that your business is flexible enough that you can plan around these life events. Yeah, example, having a baby. Um, or maybe moving across the country, maybe taking a three-week holiday to New Zealand. 
which is probably as far as we're going to be able to travel for the foreseeable future. But anyway, New Zealand's a lovely country. If you've never been there, I highly recommend. Can you imagine taking regular holidays, knowing that you will return fresh faced and ready to get back to work? You're not, not dreading, oh gosh, okay, I've had two weeks off and everything's just going to be a bit too much. Imagine not having to deal with that ever again. So are you beginning to see what is possible based on what we've talked about today? What I want to know is what if I could help you implement these principles into your business to make it this as you know, make this possible for you just as it's been possible for me. And being able to help you facilitate achieving that big picture vision that we talked about at the beginning. So this is why I've created the Glorious Hoof Academy. Ta-da! I saw the burnout in the industry in great hoof care providers who were struggling. And this made me start thinking about well, is there any kind of support out there like what I've gotten through my business coach that is specific for hoof care providers? I'd love people to be able to overcome these struggles. And in my research, I found that there's not a lot out there that's, that is that covers, yeah, the, the admin basics, but also, you know, and financial stuff, but also mindset. That was a big thing for me. And, you know, um, marketing and, 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 and promotion and branding. I felt that there was a space there that could be filled and that was needed to be filled. So I served, like I said before, I surveyed a bunch of people, hoof care providers from all over the world, and many said that they needed help with the business side of things. And in my own experience with the business coach, that totally transformed my business to a place that I'm so much happier in. Happy, it, my dream, my goal is that happy farriers stay in, in, this, in this industry long term and help more horses and we lift the you know the what's the word I'm trying to find here the quality of the entire industry so that clients expect a different level of service from us and are happy to pay for that level of service so that this this business this work that we do is finally recognized for how hard it is I've got I've got a quick little story before we move on um, I was at the feed store the other day and a man actually asked me if I thought it was hard to do, to be a farrier. He goes, you're a farrier, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, because he saw my truck. And he said, do you think it's hard? And I'm like, yeah, of course it's a hard job. And he goes, no, nah, it's not. It's not a hard job. And he kept going at me, trying to rile me up, saying it's not a hard job and it's easy as. And I, I just had to leave, honestly. Like, what? who does that? Anyway, I just thought, that, that just popped into my mind. It is a hard job, okay? We'll stop. That man. So the course, the way it will run, it's 90 day course, so 12 weeks and there's six modules. And you can see that the modules are actually, um, they map with what we've spoken through today, right? So there's, there's nurturing a success mindset, nailing the financials, stress-free administration management, building your brand, marketing to attract your ideal client and goal setting and growth planning. In the course, I'll take a deep dive with you into each step that I've covered in this masterclass today and with step-by-step -step guidance and support for you all along the way. It's all supported by live lectures, so weekly live lectures to deliver the content, guided worksheets and templates, so it could be a workbook like what you've um, used today. Yes, he was. Yes, Emma. Emma said what a that guy was not a very nice person. That is correct. Um, supported by live lectures, guided worksheets and templates. So it could be like the workbook you've got today. It could be an Excel spreadsheet for the financial staff or it could be templates that you could implement into your business. Um, I will also have for each intake a individual intakes Facebook support group where you'll have access to myself and to your peers where you can connect with them and me um, and regular live Q&A sessions uh, depending on how often that particular intake needs it. So each week you'll get one live lecture, some homework, a live Q&A and access to the support group. So who's this for? It's not just for the newbies. So you might be brand new in business, you know, it's just starting out in hoof school or less than one year out of hoof school. And this course can help you build your business out right from the beginning without having to make all those mistakes that I made. Uh, follow a process with support from you know, industry, industry professionals and your peers, and it will help you get business savvy. 
if you've been in the business for a while, so maybe as a side hustle or possibly you're experiencing a bit of lack of results in certain areas, or maybe you know you've missed the foundation steps, this will help you strengthen your business model, become more knowledgeable about business and help make better decisions. For everyone, whether you've been in the business for a while or you're just new, this course will help you get the mindset that you need to be sustainable as well. That's that's the overarching um, uh, theme of this whole business course. You can do this. So the Glorious Hoof Academy was built out of the uh, out of a need to change the hoof care industry from the inside. Designed for farriers and trimmers by a farrier, the Glorious Hoof Academy will help fast track you to success by providing you with the tools and the mindset you need to get a strong business model in place that will withstand the test of time. This is my, you know, this is my 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 business. Uh, the word has gone out of my head, but you know what I mean. This is my my statement, my business statement. Imagine how confidently you can set your prices when you know how much it costs you to trim or shoe one horse. And imagine driving your business, your clients, working with you to achieve your hoof care goals and paying you on time every time. Imagine your time off is spent with family and your friends instead of trying to make sense of your expenses or catch up on book work. And how will you feel when you are in control of your business, in control of your schedule, in control of your clients and in control of your profit? I know what you're thinking right now, what's the investment? So I've priced this course at, you know, it's a 12 week course and it's priced at 9.99 plus taxes. So in Australia, that's 10% GST as an upfront payment. If you are someone who has a bit of cash flow issues or you're just starting out, I do offer a payment plan, which is at $400 once a month for three months over the course of the duration of the course. So all prices are in Australian dollars. And yes, I know that that's quite investment, but I believe investments act like their own motivation. You know, that's your extra skin in the game to make sure that you get, you take it seriously and you do the work. I wanna talk about that bonus I was talking about at the beginning of the masterclass um, for masterclass attendees. So I'm really excited. I'm able to offer 10 spots at the reduced rate of 499 plus a bonus extra six months access to the course content after the end of the 12 weeks. So usually at the end of the 12 weeks, the course will close and you know, that's, that's it, you're on your way. But for my, because this is my launch, this is the first time I'm running through the course, I need to, I need to be able to get feedback from people. I want to develop this course to be what, what you guys want it to be. So I'm offering this discount, but I can only do that for 10 places. I'll pop the link in the chat right now. Where is it? Here we go. I'm gonna pop the link in the chat for the course. Now the doors open will after this masterclass ends. So webinar, webinar attendees who sign up today will be able to access the launch discount first, right? I'm not advertising it to anyone else until tomorrow. Doors open tomorrow to everyone. And if there's any leftover discount spaces available, they'll get snapped up. You guys get the opportunity first because you've been here with me today and you've, 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 you know, you've put that time in. Remember, there are only 10 spaces available at this price. Um, and for the entire course, doors close Tuesday the 18th of January. So that's just a little over a week. All right, we're open to questions now. Let's have a look. All righty. So I am worried about the time investment. How can I fit this in around my already busy life? Look. The lectures will be recorded. Yes, they're live lectures, but I understand that, you know, sometimes life gets in the way, you might not be able to turn up to the live lecture and they're recorded. So you'll be able to watch those lectures and go through the content during any time, any time of the day. Um, and also if you jump on the launch discount, you'll have six months access to the content and the Facebook group, okay? So you, if, you, if you think the next three months of your life are gonna be a bit busy, don't stress about that. Snatch it up at the, at the cheaper price and you'll be able to go back through that content and still have access to that, um, that support and that help. <sighs> Is there a payment plan option for the launch discount? Look, 
I don't want this opportunity to be cost prohibitive for anyone, right? Um, send me an email, the next slide will have my contact details. Send me an email and we can have a discussion over whether I can, or I can sort out a payment plan for the discount. Um, will this course be delivered, what does it say? Oh, okay, all at once. Um, no, so the way that I'm gonna deliver the course is it's 12 weeks um, and the content will be drip fed to you one week at a time, okay? So, um, so, so that you don't become overwhelmed. The first week will be there and then you'll work through that content and you won't sit there and look at 12 weeks worth of content and think, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be able to get through everything. So there's a saying that I like to, I like to, like it, it I like to refer to because it's really helped me. Um, how do you eat an elephant? How do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite at a time. So I'll drip feed the content to you. You don't need to worry about being overwhelmed. Will there be quizzes and tests or anything to help us study? Look, I can help you with study, um, study uh, techniques. I have done a lot of study in my life. <laughs> um, and <laughs> sorry. Emma said, oh my God, I got that elephant quote from you and I use it all the time. Yes, it's a good one. Um, I've done a lot of study in my life and I, I can definitely help you with study tips and tricks and, and help you get through the course. That's part of my support, okay? Um, any other questions? Can we get feedback on our workbooks? Yes, definitely, 100%. If, you, if you're if you finding that you need um, more information on something or you're struggling with a concept, that's the whole point of the live Q&As, if you're happy to share that in front of your peers. Um, if you're not happy to share that in front of your peers, you can always send me a private email. Um, okay, no questions, I'm ready. I'm so glad you're ready, Emma, that's fantastic. Um, all right, I'm gonna put up my contact details. Here we go, so you can contact me on email, on Facebook. If you're not in the Farrier's Business Cooperative Facebook group, I highly recommend it. That I'm going to be putting a heap of content, content in there to help more well, free content to help people with their businesses. So even if you're not ready to sign up today or in the near future, pop into that business group because um, that will be where you get all of the information uh, on, on the Gory Self Academy. And then, of course, I'm on Instagram as well. Thank you so much, guys. I'm finished with this, my very first uh, masterclass webinar. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. Any questions? just contact me. All right, guys, have a really good night. You're welcome, Jess. All right, guys, have a good night.